Well, it's, it, it is time for the fourth panel discussion titled the, fourth, uh, the, the Future of Plastic, moderated by Mr. Hamed Kaji, the Environmental Economist and Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, and participating delegates starting with Mr. Sir Jan Suzik, the Director of Conservation and Climate Change in Emirates Nature, WWF United Arab Emirates. Also, Mr. Chris Barber, the TFE 2019 inventor. And Miss Maitha Elma, she's the Vice President of for Sustainability of Buruj, ladies and gentlemen. And yep, that's the list. Please welcome them one more time. Hello, hi, good morning. So, I mean, this, we are in this red theater, and I think this is a, an interesting metaphor, you know, as the situation out there is not so green after all. Uh, but we are here to talk about the future of plastic, you know, or a group of materials that are known as plastic, since their inception have served an important material to transform our economic system and modernize it. It's, of course, much of it goes to the sheer, you know, in, let's say, advantages and benefits from its functionality and the low cost. However, there is a great attention to the global challenges that is out there and the pollution that are caused by this particular material, and especially the single-use plastic. And in this panel, we are going to discuss the future of plastic. And I would like also to start with Sir John, who is with Emirates Nature, and he works closely with the government and industries in finding the solution and raising awareness to the problem. So my question to you is, what systemic change do we need to see? And what is the role of those two actors, the government, the public, and the private sector in, let's say, improving the ecosystem to find the solution to reduce the impact of such material on the environment? Uh, thank you very much, Humaid. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a an honor and privilege to be here and speak today on this very interesting, very complex, and I should say very difficult topic. But again, it's, it's a pleasure yeah. and a privilege. Uh, what I would like to say here as uh, Director for Conservation and Climate Change at Emirates Nature WWF, and it is World Wildlife Fund because there are other associations that sometimes we hear, um, we are trying to work towards um, greener society here in the UAE. We're trying to work towards improved conservation measures for the marine ecosystems, terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems. We're trying to work towards circular economy, climate change and, uh, and energy, and we also deal with, with education activities as well. To be very concrete in answering to your question, I would like to say that um, there are two schools of thought when it comes to environmental policy and how issues of pollution, and particularly plastic pollution, should be, should be addressed. One is related to the footprint of the activities that our societies have, and what is the carrying capacity of the environments where we live or the global carrying capacity uh, that we are all living in and that we will be living in in the future. And the other issue is related to our values. Meaning that if we speak about technological innovation, we admire them and we hail technological innovations. We, as an essential WWF, are involved in many programs uh, that are dealing with technological innovations, be, be it government, be it corporate sector, but what we really strongly believe is that we have to take care of the fact that, as you mentioned, systemic change is needed. Building up an ecosystem around technological innovation is very important. Now, building an ecosystem that would be conducive to developing technological innovation that will hopefully address the issues of plastic and plastic presence of plastics in our nature uh, all over the globe and its universal presence there. Um, it, the environment or the ecosystem has to be conducive, but we also have to think about the limits. Because if, for example, we innovate so much and we create such a good, for example, machine that is going to take care of all our plastics, does that mean that we have to use our resources indefinitely? Does that mean that we don't have to care about how we use our resources anymore? Absolutely not. And this brings me to another point that, yes, the technological innovation can give solutions, can offer uh, remedies to the situation. But what I think is that we have, we have to, as a society here and globally as well, to look very deep into our values and say, what is it that we cherish? Uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, was once saying that we have to look at the gifts that the desert bestows upon us and we have to be patient. We have to 
look at those gifts in a sustainable manner. And this is the message that I would like to send here. It is important to have the systemic change to nurture innovation, but it is also very important to have the systemic change towards addressing the consumption patterns and to addressing the management practices as well. Thank you very much. I, uh, you highlighted you know, the issue of the use. You know, the resource use needs to significantly drop. But at the same time, you know, today as I was having my breakfast, you know, I see that you know, it's inescapable. Plastic will be there, and it is there to stay for a long time. You know, and this, is, this takes me to my question you know, to Meta as the Vice President of Sustainability in Bruges. Bruges as the leader and the birth of plastic you know, and their raw material format you know, is where Bruges you know, work in that space. You know. Where do you see Bruges positioning itself in terms of thinking about the design of the material and thinking about the global trend in reducing the plastic material you know, that is required to produce much of the goods. Thank you, Hamid. Is this one? Okay, um, thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here and a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Well, first of all, I want to just clear any misconceptions. Plastics does not just mean plastic bottles and plastic bags. Um, as you mentioned, plastics are all around us. They're in our cars, they're in our homes, they allow us to have access to energy, to clean water and sanitation. Um, advancements in healthcare have been made possible because of plastics. Plastics increase the shelf life of our food and can reduce food wastage by up to 47%. So huge advancements, plastics and our solutions contribute to major global challenges. Um, yet there is a problem. Globally, there is a problem which is waste. Not just plastic waste, waste in general. So I think, first of all, there needs to be a, um, a clear differentiation between single-use, just single-use plastics to rather single-use full stop. Because, yes, you could replace a plastic bottle with this glass bottle, but if you only use this bottle once and throw it away, you're actually causing more harm than you are good. Plastics remain the, um, the material with the lowest environmental footprint. But how do we use it? So, I mean, touching back on, um, on comments made already, we need to move towards a circular economy. And that is a responsibility within ourselves. So moving from a produce, use, dispose culture to one of a produce, use, reuse, and recycle. So, yeah. The issue of reusing, you know, and, uh, and keeping the system in, you know, the material in the loop is very important, you know, and you touched upon circular economy where we eliminate as much as possible waste and make sure that these go back to the production and create um, new products from uh, you know, using this kind of material. And this exactly takes me to Chris, who has an SME and works in this space. If you can share with us you know, what does the degrade the company that you started, you know, provides in terms of solution, and what is your business model, and to what extent are you integrated in the Abu Dhabi and the UAE innovation ecosystem. Sure, thanks, Hamed. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, this opportunity to speak to you. Um, yes, so uh, degrade. Basically, we take uh, plastic bottles and recycle them into yarns for uh, basically repurposing polyester. So rather than making polyester from oil, we're using an existing waste, or as we call it, a resource. We see plastic as a resource material. Uh, we recognize the value of plastic in terms of the practicalities of it. Uh, the, the, the fact that there's a lot of obviously bad press out there now for plastic. Um, but when you look at the alternatives with certainly as far as bottled water is concerned and using glass, we believe that it's actually worse for the environment to use glass than it is plastic if you recycle your plastic. I think the whole thing is that we have to look at behavioural change and trying to change people's mentality and not see it as a waste material and actually see it as a resource. And the fact that we have something tangible that we produce from 
what is otherwise considered to be a waste material, it encourages people to recycle it. So the problems that we have here in the UAE is that there is a lot of plastic production, but very little recovery. Uh, and that is due to many different things, but partly because there is no landfill tax, or until recently there was no landfill tax at all, so there's no real incentive for companies to actually recycle it. Um, the transportation costs of uh, actually taking it to a dump or a landfill site is cheaper than the process of recycling it itself as such, so there has to be some regulation brought in to encourage companies and encourage consumers to recycle their, their raw material. Before I go to Sir John, back to Sir John, but I will have direct my question to Meta. To what extent plastic, you know, in their current format, you know, and their chemical composition are recyclable? And what is Bruges doing in terms of improving its recyclability while maintaining its functionality? So plastics are recyclable. I mean, there's no debating that. You can recycle plastics. Um, at Buruj, in, across the industry, innovation and plastics have really gone hand in hand from the very early days. Um, innovations in healthcare, innovations in, in mobility, innovations in piping. And so innovation has been part of it. Um, within Buruj, innovation is part of our DNA. So we have developed something called a product sustainability index. So all our new products and our new innovations are measured against a sustainability index, which we have clear targets for as well, which are public um, it, you know, as a minimum uh, requirement. Um, but in addition, um, part of our mandate and part of our vision and our position is we design with the end in mind. So we work very closely with our partners, our brand owners, our consumers, um, to design our products that are easier to recycle. Now, uh, recently we launched a product line called Enteo, which moved from a, the same application, but moved from a multi-layer product to a mono-layer product, which makes it easier to recycle. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have a yogurt tub which is um, yeah. which is recyclable essentially, but it has it's multiple layers. Layer. It's got a paper part, it's got aluminium, it's got plastics. So this becomes then more difficult because of the segregation pro uh, process. But when you have a mono layer material, it then becomes far easier to um, recycle. Okay. In addition, we have set up a packaging center of excellence where our teams work so very closely well, across yeah. the value chain to come up with these sustainable. Uh, solutions. So as the, they were pointing for me that we have very limited time, you know, I would go back to Sir John and, and my question to you is, you know, there are many innovations that are taking place and there are many companies, you know, are in the space of, you know, making sure that the circular economy is there and there are actors you know, to okay. enable this framework. However, the impact that is out there at the scale of the <coughs> Are you very optimistic, you know, and do you think we can transition towards you know very low impact and or it need an impact let's see. What critical solutions do you think need to exist to reduce the impact of such material? Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting question. Let me just use a very concrete example. I think plastic as as uh, Meta said, I mean plastics is an unavoidable material currently globally with the population growth trends that we have, uh, we cannot live without plastics, and it's, it's obvious. When it comes to different types of plastics, yes, we can talk about it, and I agree that it's important to look at the life cycle of the whole product and see where we could actually interfere and make things better, improve the, the environmental performance of all stages in a, in a, in a life cycle of a, of a certain product. But just a very concrete example, here in this beautiful country of UAE, the leading cause of death of feral camels, this revered animal, a symbol of cultural uh, and, if you will, at a certain level, even religious tradition, is the leading cause of death of this animal is plastic ingestion. You know, camels die in the desert because of plastics. They eat plastics, their stomachs get full, they cannot ingest food anymore, and they die of starvation. And this is a scientific fact. So what I'm trying to say here, it is not easy to say, okay, the people or the companies that produce plastics are responsible only. 
because they will come to you and say, if you're the government, then you have to think about that as well, because we cannot be held responsible. I work with, with the corporates, and instead of saying the extended producer responsibility, that is a system where the producers contribute to taking care of the end-of-life phases of their products, plastic and other products as well, in Europe, for example, or in America, the producers are saying, yes, extended producer responsibility, but not endless producer responsibility. Then you have other parts of the, of the value chain of these products that also you, you also have to take into account. When it comes to the responsibility of the government, I think it is a very, very important factor when the governments decide what they want to do and which direction they would like to take. And these directions, these strategic decisions are important in terms of saying, for example, like in Europe, some European countries, whatever you place on the market, you have to collect and recycle 75%, 80%, regardless of the percentage, but you have to be very clear, or, or a government being very clear about the percentage helps stimulate this, this ecosystem. And finally, there are citizens, but you have to educate them how to dispose, how to recycle, how to segregate waste, and that's very important. And you can provide them with these innovative solutions. How can they do it? Through, for example, a reverse vending machine, through um, AI-empowered trash bins connected into a blockchain platform that measure how these things happen, and that's very good. But you cannot only say, oh, it's the citizens' fault, the citizens throw the plastics away. It is a joint responsibility, and I think it's a, this is a good example of convening these different players and thinking about the, the future. Since we have only two minutes left, you know, we have innovations in place, you know, there are companies and there are changes that need to be done on the landscape of the policy. You know, to support and enable the firm, you know, the ecosystem, you know, to uptake, you know, or accelerate the uptake, you know, of circular economic framework, and to make sure that these materials are not escaping, you know, into the environment. So, you know, there are many thoughts and there are many challenges, of course, you know, and I would like to give the space for the audience to engage with one question. You know, I think that's possible. If one question you can direct to the, our panelists, you know, that would be. Great. Otherwise, we any questions from the audience? I don't. See. Well, I see one hand there. Is there a microphone? Is there a microphone there? Or? Okay. So I I can give you mine. very much. Um, my question, if I may, is concerns the circular economy. And um, I think the audience would be grateful to get an opinion about how best the circular economy can be facilitated at different parts of the value chain in the plastic, um, in the va plastic value chain. Thank you. Um, I'll take what to add to it. Um, yes, you, you brought it uh, very well. Um, various parts of the value chain. And I think as a society and as industry and as organizations, we need to move away from saying we are driving towards a circular economy to we have a circular economy strategy and framework in place. And then that's multifaceted. You start from you know the top of the value chain, the, the raw material producers. Uh, working closely with the brand owners in designing, um, so in designing with recyclability in mind, how we can close that loop or increase that recycling uh, part of things. Um, increasing recyclates into the product portfolio. Uh, but then moving further down the value chain, awareness and education. Yes, it is, it's, it's our cumulative responsibility. Um, and there was a survey that was run by YouGov a couple of years ago, and frankly, the results were shocking, where 50% of the population said it was government and industry's responsibility to solve this problem. No, it's, it's a joint effort, and in order for it to be successful, we all have to work together. Um, so, yes, working together with the NGOs, working together with the brand owners, in raising awareness, in building that infrastructure. Infrastructure is very important. Having a place where you can recycle uh, your material and then closing it and bringing, bringing it back into the loop. But again, it doesn't stop there. Um, at Baruj, we are partners in Project Stop, 
which we launched in Munchar in Indonesia. Indonesia is the second um, largest contributor to marine litter, where it's a systems approach, it's an enabler, it's a city partnership where we work closely with that government to build that infrastructure. It's not a cleanup, but rather stopping the tap um, on ocean plastic, putting in the, the education amongst the communities, um, putting that waste segregation, building a sorting facility in that town so that they can then get value. So moving away from that mindset where it is waste to it is a resource and it adds values back into the community. Does anyone have anything else? So I think by then, you know, we close the session and thank you very much, you know, all for participating in the session and thank you for our esteemed panelists. Thank you very much.